welcome, welcome. So glad you could join us once again here at Community United Methodist Church in Romulus, where we spend some time doing a talk and tell, where we talk about the scripture, which will be at the center of this Sunday's worship, and then we do a dramatic telling using slides and so forth. So let's get started. Last week, in Matthew 14, we considered the story of the loaves and the fishes, often referred to as the, the feeding of the 5,000. And yes, that miracle was witnessed by more people than any other miracle. And it's the only miracle that actually appears in all four Gospels. Well, today's story comes immediately after that miracle. In all the Gospels, that is, except Luke, for some unknown reason. And I might suggest that this is the miracle that is most commonly attributed to Jesus. Yes, walking on the water. But he's not the only one, by the way, who was able to walk on the water. But before I get too far ahead of myself, let's set the scene. After the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus sent his disciples away. In fact, in Matthew's telling of this story, it says that he made them embark on the boat and go on ahead. Now, at first blush, that might seem a little strange that he made them leave. But if we turn to John's telling of this story, the reason becomes a little more clear. In John 6, it says that after feeding of the multitude, quote, Jesus knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. Amen. You see, there was such a groundswell of popular acclaim for Jesus in what was already a very volatile political situation in Palestine. A revolution could very well have started right then and there. And actually, the, the disciples could have even made it worse and more complicated because they themselves were even thinking of Jesus only in terms of his earthly power, as if he himself was another king. So, Jesus sent his disciples away so he could best deal with this situation alone. And when he was alone, he went up on the mountain to pray. And by this time, of course, night had come. And the disciples had set out back across the lake. Uh, by the way, the Sea of Galilee was actually much smaller than Lake St. Clair in this region. And one of the sudden storms for which this lake was notorious had come down. And they were struggling against the winds and the waves and making very little progress. And as the night wore on, Jesus began to walk round the head of the lake to reach the other side. So it's about three in the morning, and Jesus, walking on the high ground at the north side of the lake, clearly saw the boat fighting with the waves. So he came down to the shore to help. And that is what this story is actually all about. In the hour of the disciples' greatest need, Jesus came to them. When the wind was against them and life was a struggle, Jesus was there to help. And what I'm going to get into more later is when we compare this story to our own lives, the wind is often against us. Often our lives are, are filled with desperate struggle with our circumstances, with our temptations, our sorrows, our decisions. So the story we're about to hear tells us all that whatever your struggle, you are not alone. Because Jesus comes to us across the storms of life with hands stretched out to save and with his calm, clear voice encouraging us to take heart and to have no fear. So now, let's hear the story of Matthew uh, 14 to uh, verses 20 to 2 to 33, and related to a message I will tell later of you too can walk on water. So let's hear 
how it is written in Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33, where it is written, Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves, because the wind was against it. And shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter replied, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. O oh, you of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And know this for certain. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now, for those of you who enjoy watching this series, we'd like to invite you to support us, if you can afford to, by any of three simple methods. You can scan that QR code there, or you can go manually to type in the uh, web address to our giving page, or the good old tried and true way, you can mail us a check to our 111 60 Olive Street address showing there on the screen. And whatever level of gift you can afford why, by whatever method is comfortable for you, we thank you very gratefully for your support. And we do look forward to seeing you in person this Sunday at our Olive Street address at 1030 this Sunday morning. And in the meantime, may you and your family be blessed. Amen.